I thought I'd share a few reflections on the decision of the Maryland Public Service Commission on Friday. And let me begin by saying the obvious. No one wants to give Pepco a penny right now. And I think the reality is the commission did not want to give Pepco a penny either. But the commission found that as a matter of law, it was required to give Pepco a small portion of what it asked for. And for every penny in which they had discretion, they said, no, you don't get more than we have to give you. So in that way, I do believe the commission has heard our people, understands that the level of frustration is through the roof, and that they too are frustrated. And this order is replete with their statements as to how frustrated the commission is with PEPCO. I've been one of those that argued for performance-based rate making where if you perform, you get your rates. If you don't perform, you don't get your rates. The commission in this order adopted performance-based rate making. They reduced PEPCO's return on equity by half a percent on the basis of PEPCO's poor performance. That is something that we fought for before the state legislature and weren't able to get. But even in fighting for it, we always knew that the commission had the discretion and the authority to do precisely that, and they exercised that authority. Now, our county argued for an even lower rate return on equity. We argued for 8.4 percent. The commission came in at 9.3 percent. And obviously, all of us would have preferred for the commission to have reduced their return even more. But having said that, there's no question that this is a step in the right direction. And in a context in which PEPCO was asking for an increase in its return on equity to get a reduction in their return on equity is clearly a positive sign. In the world of public utilities, this is not an inconsequential reduction. So while all of us lament that PEPCO under the law is entitled to recover prudent investments, investments found by the commission to have been prudent, that is the law, and quite frankly, it is the law across the country. Maryland's not alone in that regard. So we may wish that the law was different, but where the law did not require the commission to give them a penny, they didn't. And so I, I feel like it's important for those of us that have been critical of the Public Service Commission, and I have been as critical of the Public Service Commission as I have been of PEPCO, quite frankly. The Commission acknowledged it dropped the ball on not understanding how PEPCO's reliability had fallen to the lowest quartile nationally for five years. I was and have been very critical of the Commission. And so I personally feel an obligation to stand up and say when I think that the Commission has moved in the right direction and has been responsive to the best of its ability under the law. Because otherwise, I think it just feeds into the cynicism of our state institutions, and I think we have an obligation not to feed into that cynicism of our state institutions when our state institutions do what we ask them to do under the law. So those are my observations with respect to PEPCO. We have another small little matter coming before our council tomorrow with respect to the Costco filling station. Let me share some thoughts with you with respect to that, given that the matter will be coming before our council tomorrow. Um, I am not speaking for our council. In this moment, I don't know how that matter will play out. Uh, I suspect it could be a very close vote, five to four one way, five to four the other way. I really don't know in this moment how it will go. Um, I am not supporting this legislation. Uh, I am not a co-sponsor of it. Uh, 
but I did look at it very closely and I care very deeply for the neighbors that feel like they are going to be adversely affected. My vote is not a vote in favor of the gas station. My vote will be in favor of the process that we have used for deciding these issues over and over again, and I have not been convinced that those processes are inadequate to address the issues before them. I also feel that it sends the wrong signal to our broader community with respect to the rules of the game. You may remember that when the county executive first proposed supporting Westfield Mall's efforts to land Costco, that they asked us to automatically approve the gas station. And my colleagues and I just looked at them and said, that's, that's not going to happen. Costco has to play by the rules just like everybody else. And we said, we're not going to give them the automatic right. We will give them the same rights that everybody else has. Try for a special exception. That was, if you will, the arrangement, the understanding. And in the absence of compelling evidence that suggests that we ought to change our view with respect to that process, I think it's a process that ought to be honored. I have not been convinced that the material that has been presented to us since that time is so compelling that it warrants changing the rules of the game or deciding as a matter of legislation that citing it there just simply cannot work and should not go forward. So again, my position is not whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. My position is we have a process for deciding that and we ought to honor that process. Finally, let me speak to something that we're doing on Wednesday uh, that I'm, I'm quite pleased about and that hasn't actually gotten a, a lot of conversation. We are having the first joint meeting with Fairfax Board of Supervisors on transportation issues affecting Fairfax and Montgomery County, specifically looking at the American Legion Bridge and how are we going to go about doing what we need to do to relieve congestion between our two communities. I started this with a similar conversation with Prince George's County, talking about the issues that on transportation that are something that we need to work on together. And while Fairfax County and Montgomery County are rivals, we also share in the desire to relieve congestion. And so it's important that we begin having those kinds of conversations together. And so that's the purpose of Wednesday's meeting in which we will begin doing that and working together to solve this regional problem. So those are the three items that I thought I would share with you as my opening, and now I'll open it up to you guys. Wow. When you say the PSC's move is, a, is basically, and their examination of this, a step in the right direction, um, couldn't they have said, okay, nothing for you, Pepco, you, you don't deserve any of this? I think they said you don't deserve any of this, but they said as a matter of law, we are required to give you this. Do you agree with that? As the law stands today, I actually, I do. I think they complied with the law. Let me give you an example. They spent two and a half million dollars on smart meters. They bought them, they installed them, they're operating in our homes in Montgomery County today. Under the law, the commission is obligated to give them the dollars they spent on that prudent investment, unless the commission finds it's not prudent. That is the law here in Maryland. Again, it is the law almost in every state in the country. There are other ways to make your displeasure of Pepco's performance felt. And I think the commission did that. They said, where we don't have, dis where we do have discretion, we're not giving you a penny. And we're going to reduce your return on equity because we are tired of this performance. You're not getting the message. So within the confines of the law, I think they did what they had to do. 
and there is a, a basis for that law. Uh, they could have reduced their return on equity even more. We had argued for an 8.4 percent return. Um, and it's really one of the things I'm, I'm most proud of is Eric Friedman's here of our Department of Consumer Affairs. I mean, we, we fight very hard for our ratepayers. So you could quibble as to whether or not could they have gone down even more. Yep, they could have. But that's why I call it a step in the right direction, that they reduced their return by a half a point. Given the step in the right direction, do you still feel like the county and the state need to pursue things like public power options and competitive bidding processes for other private companies? I, I do. In fact, their order speaks a lot to the fact of that in a competitive world, PEPCO would have been losing money. People would have fled PEPCO. People would have put their business elsewhere. And it's one of the reasons why I continue to believe that the public power option must be pursued, because in the absence of that kind of option, you don't have any competitive leverage. And I think we ought to have that competitive leverage. And you don't have it in the world of regulated monopoly utilities. It's only the commission that can impose what the market would have said. And so they're reducing their return on equity was their effort to reflect what the market's response would have been had the market been given the opportunity to speak. What did you think about the PLC posting the ruling at 5 o'clock and then taking off for the weekend? Well, I have to say to you, I spoke with the chairman well in advance of it, and he always felt that it was going to be mid-afternoon. Uh, at the earliest, it's a 162-page order, and their technology is not unlike uh, many government technologies. It takes a while to get the order precisely right and post it. So I don't believe it was in any way, you know, trying to shield itself from public conversation. Because I assure you, it people were talking about it no matter what. So. With regard to the American Legion Bridge, uh, is there something specific you would like to see happen? Well, one of the things I would like to see happen as we advance in our, our rapid transit conversation is trying to find ways in which we could link uh, Fairfax and Montgomery County through rapid transit. Um, and the American Legion Bridge is obviously a key link in that conversation. So, yes. So later today, the uh, Fed committee is looking at the structure of the Department of Economic Development, something you've spoken about before. Do you have feelings about where DED should be compared to where it is? I do, um, and it's reflected in the legislation that I've introduced uh, and that I believe we will be taking up in the fall. So we're getting, uh, my understanding is there's a report today that's being released uh, by consultants. Uh, that have reviewed um, various options. Uh, and I continue to believe uh, that relying more on business to help us attract business is a better way to go. Uh, there's some desire to explore state legislation that would make it clear that we uh, could create an independent authority uh, modeled after other jurisdictions. So there continues to be a great deal of interest in improving uh, our economic development model. I'm sorry, which legislation are you referring to? Uh, I referred to two. One was legislation that I've introduced that will be taken up in the fall, but not today. And the other is the ex- Which was what? I'm sorry. That's what I'm asking. I don't remember. When did you the Peace in the Fall. What's the- uh, The Peace in the Fall is revamping our economic development organization. Okay. okay. And happy to give you Mr. Reamer and I and Mr. Elrich, uh, I believe, are the original co-sponsors with respect to that effort and happy to get you a copy of it. Okay. After the debriefing, um, President Graham came up to me and gave you an email or something. Can you tell us about that? That seemed unusual to me. Um, it was an email that it actually wasn't an email, it was a letter that he had written to a constituent and uh, advising them of the outage and the constituent had written back something that was um, not okay. Why did he want me to know about it? I think he wanted to know 
the extent of the anger that was out there and how it was directed at people at Pepco in ways that were not okay. Can you elaborate? What does not okay mean? It, was it, it threatening? It was threatening. I mean, it, it had that tone to it. Yes. So what do you do with that information? I, I asked Mr. Graham if there was anything further he wanted me to do with that information, so I've left it in his hands with respect to that. And he's certainly capable of doing whatever he needs to do with respect to it. He doesn't need my intervention. He simply was alerting me that people are really very upset. Was it a threat on his personal safety? I'm not going to speak more than what I've said. Did, did he blame you and, and your efforts to sort of right the situation Pepco has gotten itself into? He did not. Okay. He did not. On Capitol Hill, there's been discussion of a commuter tax. Um, your thoughts on a commuter tax? I have no thoughts on a commuter tax. I, I, I have not been part of that conversation, so I really, I'm just, I don't feel comfortable. Is that something you at all, you, when you hear it, do you think, ah, oh, it'll never happen, it's never had any traction at all, or? Uh, is it something that, you know, counties are talking about, or? This county certainly hasn't had any conversation about it that I'm, that I have been part of as chair of the Transportation Committee. Can you tell us what else happened with PEPCO? Is there another meeting this week with the county departments, and are you meeting with any constituents who are still upset? Are you going out into neighborhoods, or? There is a grassroots movement taking place now that basically has said, we've had enough. Uh, and so my own posture with respect to that is that that's an appropriate outlet and that people ought to express their views, but I, as a, an elected official, don't feel it's my role, if you will, to be part of that movement because I think it then changes the nature of the movement. If it's a grassroots movement, it ought to be a grassroots movement. Uh, but the leaders of that movement have asked to meet with me to give them ideas or just uh, talk through things that we're doing and how they can best be helpful, and I will certainly meet with them to explore those options. Um, I think the next step really is going to be on August 7th when they have their public hearing here at Rockville uh, in which the public needs to share directly. I actually, I apologize folks, uh, what I'd like to do is later today and if you maybe hang around, I will give you copies of the emails that I have given to the chairman. I've got a 10-page document that summarizes the emails, and I meant to make those available on Thursday, but in the rush to get everything done, I did not get that piece done. So I will release to you so you can see absolutely what our constituents are saying about PEPCO, uh, about the Public Service Commission, about the need for public power, about their communications, um, all those sets of issues. And they are now part of the formal record before the commission in its investigation of how PEPCO responded to the, uh, to the storm. Um, so the next step really is for the commission to do its work on the storm to determine whether or not PEPCO performed adequately and if it didn't, to hold them accountable. Uh, and so that's... Are we monitoring power outages on a daily basis as well? I, I received some calls over the weekend um, in the Lakeland Committee of Gaithersburg that there were some blue sky outages last week. Are, are you all monitoring that? Well, are we monitoring? We hear them from constituents much like you do. And mm -hmm. again, recognize that PEPCO's rating in the lowest quartile nationally is on sunny day outages. Mm -hmm. That is where they have performed so miserably, and that does not include major storms, which is why, again, if you'll forgive me, if you have a weak utility system that meets a strong storm, you have a terrible combination. And that's what we've had for many years now. We have sunny day outages, and then we have extended outages during storms that I believe are fundamentally related to the fact that you've got a weak system. So yes, we hear these outages every day and we report them and we try and make sure that PEPCO knows when constituents are without power and communicate, but it's fundamentally the job of the Public Service Commission 
to know those outages, and PEPCO has to report those outages to the Public Service Commission, not here to the County Council. The last time the PSC was here for those meetings, uh, a lot of residents were upset that public officials, I think, spoke for a full two hours before the first, you know, John Q. public got a chance to speak. Um, when I asked the PSC about that, they said, lesson learned, that will change. Are you, are the you chairman. telling your, your peers to go, let's wait and, and hear from citizens for let, let them go first? Well, yes. And the chairman advised me of that uh, in a conversation on Thursday as well, and I totally support the chairman in that regard. We don't need special treatment. Uh, and quite frankly, my view is that we as elected officials don't need to speak at this juncture. It is a time for the public to speak. Um, so I don't plan on participating in that on August 7th. Uh, our county is a formal party to this investigation, will be a formal party to this investigation. We will, I am sure, do what we've done in the past and argue on behalf of our constituents. And so it doesn't seem appropriate for me as president of the council or chair of the committee to opine on these issues. We will have our opportunity. It's time to hear from our residents. Victor. What's going on with your commission bill? Where are we with? We're on pause. Um, we've been advised by our county attorney that uh, our authority in this way is very limited. And so we are, have had meetings uh, internally to decide a course forward, and I will now share with you what I believe uh, our course forward will be. It will be in seeing if we can uh, sit down with PEPCO, sit down with the Public Service Commission, sit down with uh, some arborists, and see if we can craft a memorandum of understanding with PEPCO as opposed to legislation that would improve the results of tree trimming in our county. They have memorandum of understandings with other municipalities today. I have shared that with the chairman of the, of the Public Service Commission, asked if he would participate or his people would participate if we were to proceed down that path, and he indicated that they would. I've advised PEPCO that this is my desire to proceed in this manner, and we'll see if we can uh, can achieve an outcome that is does not get in the way of reliability, but that also improves the the quality of tree trimming in our community. So when was the meeting? When did you guys decide to switch from legislation to the formal rules? We had a meeting several weeks ago in which we have internally discussed this, and I am announcing it now. And what's the structure moving forward? Do you know when these discussions will take place? I, I do not know when these discussions will take place. They will, they will not take place between now and when we go on recess, and so I would imagine that these will be conversations that take place at the end of August and in September. And when you say you reference other MOUs, what, what other MOUs and what, and what those They have MOUs with the City of Rockville, and they have MOUs with Tacoma Park. And so we are looking at those memorandums of understanding and seeing whether or not they could serve as a model for a memorandum of understanding with the county. So just making sure I understand, are you going to let the legislation go and not amend it? I am going to see whether or not we can achieve a comparable results with a voluntary agreement before proceeding with legislation. The last time that we had spoke, I was talking about how you felt the county responded to the storm. And you had said that you had We will have that self-assessment, I believe, uh, this week uh, or ne is it next week? I apologize, Neil, that when we have tomorrow, we will begin. We will hear from, it's on the agenda, we will hear from uh, the county executive and his people as to what their assessment is and lessons learned and things of that nature. So you, but you personally, have you given it any thought yet? I have personally drawn no conclusions at this point in time. I, I do think there's some things that we can do that better than we've done, but I want to wait and see how the conversation goes tomorrow. What things do you think we could have done better? Like, I'm sorry, did you not hear my... <laughs> 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 was I not, was I not speaking clearly? <laughs> <laughs> Roger, I got two quick questions for you. One PEPCO related, one not. Yes, sir. Uh, the first one goes, uh, and, and if you've answered these, forgive me because it came in late, but um, first is about the two lakes that the county has found they have carcinogens in, uh, Lake Whetstone and Gunners Lake. Uh, any move to at least put signs up there and let people know that 
there's been car I mean, people are fishing out of that lake, and that, or is it not that serious? The the what we've led, been led to believe is it's kind of a serious situation. And I don't believe that it represents a public health issue of the magnitude that would warrant that type of disclosure. Um, and if it did, just let them know. If it did, I believe our, our our departments would have done so. They did find, and and it is a serious issue. I mean, we have legislation that's pending before us that would outlaw a particular coal tar yeah. that contributes to the problem. Uh, and so it is something that we're taking very seriously. The Department of Environmental Protection has endorsed that legislation. Um, so. If there's more that we should be doing with respect to those uh, lakes, I'm not aware of it, but I, I'll certainly look into it. Yeah, simple signage. I mean, just letting people know that, you know, you found carcinogens in the lake. People out there fishing, they kind of need to know, I would think. But that's that's just the question. Okay. The second one, Pepco related, in speaking with Brian Frosch after your all's meeting the other day, he said there has to be a move in the legislature and quickly to do something about Pepco. What exactly do you anticipate that legislation will be, and what part will the county take in that? What role will you have? Well, my there are two things that I think need to be fixed, if you will, uh, one of which is within the prerogative today of the commission, and, and that's this notion of PEPCO getting held harmless even when power is out. And um, so I had been among those that argued to not allow that to occur, and the commission actually changed its rules uh, and limited it to what it says is 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding of the District of Columbia rules is that it doesn't allow it for 24 hours. Now, the chairman said something different in his testimony before the, the council, and we need to, we need to look at that. Um, but my belief is that it's the type of thing that undermines people's respect for our regulatory process if they feel that a penny is going to PEPCO uh, at a time when they're not getting power. So I think that should be fixed. I believe the commission on its own initiative should fix it. It certainly has the authority to fix it. Right. And I, 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 I wish that the chairman had understood that this is an opportunity for them to just say, you know, we hear you. Uh, we're going to look at this again and, and, and fix it. As far as, as far as the legislative part of it. Well, and the legislative part with respect to it that, that I've been asking for is enabling legislation with respect to public power. Not to grant us public power, but to grant us the right to explore it and should we conclude that it's in our county's best interest, and in my judgment, should a referendum agree, then I think that our county ought to have, if you will, the right to self-determination on this fundamental quality of life issue. Is that what Frosch is talking about? I don't know. Uh, Senator Frosch, uh, I have spoken with him, and Senator Frosch in his testimony indicated that public power is certainly something that needs to be considered. And one last follow-up. Here, all of this but $18 million was, was, I mean, that's the way the PSC is billing it, is they denied all but $18 million. Looking at the other side of the coin, they gave them $18 million for, they said, infrastructure repairs. That's not even what they have every year in their budget for infrastructure repairs. And they haven't used, their, according to their own admissions, the amount in their budget for infrastructure repairs. So why the hell are we giving them $18 more million? Well, and, and I promise you, everybody is asking themselves that question. Okay, People scratch their head and they say, how can you possibly give them a penny? And here's the bottom line. The law requires them to give them money that was prudently invested, okay? That is the law in Maryland. It is fundamentally the law across the country. And what the commission went out of its way to try and say is, that's all we're giving you. We're only giving you that which is required by law. So you can pose the question, should we change the law? I shared before you came here why that law effectively is what it is. If a utility makes a prudent investment, the commission reviews that investment, finds it to have been prudent, it does in fact improve the system. Under the compact we have, the utility has the right to recover those dollars. Now, where this gets a different conversation again is on return on equity. One of the reasons for public power is you're not having to attract 
investors. You're not having to pay shareholders. So you have a fundamentally different paradigm. And you have a fundamentally different paradigm because of public power, presumably would not have been asking for an increase at a time of such terrible performance because they are more responsive to the public as opposed to, again, having this dual responsibility and loyalties to shareholders. Right. So, well, so, I'm sorry, one last final follow-up. All right, so the PSC gives them the $18 million. In September, they're going to haul them before the Public Service Commission in what they call legislative-style hearings because of what occurred this summer. So, in essence, can they come back in the, and after that whack them up with a fine for, for more than... Yes, absolutely. If they find that PEPCO did not do what PEPCO should have done in the aftermath of this storm, either prepare for it or in their communications or in their restoration times, the Commission has all the authority it needs to penalize PEPCO. And would you encourage that? Absolutely, have encouraged it. What do you think they should be fined? How much? Well, I don't think you can make that determination in advance of the findings as to what they should have done. More than 18 million? <laughs> I appreciate your question. We have a mutual answer. we have a mutual appreciation. <laughs> yeah. I, I I cannot divorce the penalty from the wrong. Okay? So let's figure out let's look at Virginia uh, Dominion power. Okay, one of the things that Congressman Van Hollen's contribution to the conversation was look at how quickly Dominion Power restored power. And so that's what the commission needs to be doing, and that's the, the point of this investigation is to look at how PEPCO restored power compared to other utilities that were hit by the storm or other times. Did they do all the things they should have done every moment? And if they find they didn't, then they ought to get whacked. I like that term. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Um, except for your partner. Ooh. Ponder, you guys are speaking <laughs> up on Tuesday. Um, no. no. <laughs> what we are doing on Tuesday is introducing it on Tuesday. I promise you we are not taking it up on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what's your initial... Well, what I would say is that this is a controversial issue every place that it is raised. Uh, actually, I had a conversation recently with a reporter from Calgary who was doing a, a story of our uh, planning department, uh, ex-planning department head, uh, and uh, I raised the accessory department issue, and he goes, oh, Council Member Berliner, we had that same debate here in Calgary, okay? This is a controversial issue where you have um, basically neighbors and neighborhoods that are concerned about its impact on the quality of their neighborhood, on their property values, and on the other hand, you have people that point to that this is what we need to do to increase affordable housing in our community. This is what you need to do in order to have senior housing in our community. This is what you need to do to allow people to stay in their homes. And it's also what you need to do in order to stop the gray market that exists today, which is people basically don't honor the law today, and they do this anyway. So there, it's going to be a pot boiler, no question about it. What, do you, what are you actually considering tomorrow, though? What We're just introducing, introducing it. We're just introducing the legislation that will allow us to then have the public hearings and to work our way through this. And going back on to the return on equity thing, I mean, some may say that would just cause Wall Street to go ape, <laughs> go crazy. I'm wondering what you are going to do. I think the commission answered that. Here's their sentence on the 9.3, which I don't think would have been a lot different at 8.4. We have no doubt that a monopoly company in a stable service territory with a potential of earning 8.4 or 9.3 on its equity will be able to attract the necessary capital in the current low interest rate environment to meet its statutory requirements to provide safe and reliable service to its customers. This is among the most attractive times in utility history for raising money for a utility. 
interest rates are extremely low, and utility stocks, because they are generally so stable, are very attractive. So this is a time to say to them, you know, you can't increase your profits at a time when you are performing so poorly. And the other thing that's important that the commission order explicitly recognizes is that if we were to increase your return on equity, there's no pledge that you'll reinvest in your system as opposed to just give it away in dividends. And so the commission said, I'm sorry, this is not a good bargain. We're not going to give you more profits at a time of underperforming without any pledge that you're going to actually put this money back in the system and invest it as opposed to give it to shareholders. Shareholders have done far better than ratepayers, and it's time to redress that imbalance, and I think this order, again, is a step in that direction. We good, gang? Thank you.